According to this Harvard Business Review article, bad data costs the US an incredible $3 trillion a year. A big part of the problem are poorly structured databases, and that's why you need to learn about data normalization. So let me explain what it is in just a few minutes using simple language and practical examples. Let's get into it. First up, what is data normalization? And simply put, it's the process of organizing data so it's clean, consistent, and easy to use. And you might be like, well, isn't that just putting it into a table, like this table over here that's got some headers, and it's got the data organized with the order ID and some values on the side. But actually, it has a lot of hidden problems that I'm about to show you, which is why we need to normalize it. For instance, here we repeat the product name, the category, the store name, and the store address multiple times. That adds a lot of disk space and begs the question of whether we need all of these columns repeated. I'll show you how to eliminate these redundancies without actually losing the data. The second problem has to do with repeated data and any update issues that that might cause. For example, with this store address over here, if we update it once, we need to make sure that it gets updated for every single order. In a large data set where you've got thousands of rows or even millions of rows, this can easily lead to an error as you might forget one or two. The technical term for this problem is known as an update anomaly. And if you're not familiar with the word anomaly, in this scenario, I would see it just as a problem. So for instance, an update problem in this case. The third problem that arises without proper data normalization is an insertion anomaly. This happens when we're unable to add new information to the database because of the way it's structured. For example, suppose we've added a new store here called the Miami one, but we haven't received any orders yet. Because of our current table structure, we're forced to include some null values in there, which not only introduces incomplete data, but can also make it look like those null values are errors. Data normalization will help us solve this by storing new information in a separate area. The final problem I wanted to address is deletion anomaly, which happens when you delete a single record and that unintentionally removes important data. For example here, if we deleted the airport's row and all the data is stored in this one table, we lose all records of having airports as a product. Now that we've identified the major errors, we clearly need a better structure, and that's where data normalization comes in. For this, we use a set of guidelines known as normal forms, and you need to satisfy rule one before moving on to rule two. If the first rule is observed, the data is said to be in first normal form, then second normal form, and finally third normal form. Overall, the higher the number, the better, and to show you an analogy, let's look at martial arts. 1 and F would be, let's say, the equivalent of a yellow belt, then 2 and F might be a blue belt, and then all the way to 3 and F for a black belt. The higher the person's rank, the lower their risk of error. You can see the normal forms in the same way. Now that we understand the concept of normal forms, let's go over the first one. Here it says that a single cell must not hold more than one value. In technical terms, that's known as an atomic value. As you can see in this example, under product, we've got iPhone 14 and AirPods, so that doesn't fit the criteria. Instead, you would normalize the data by creating two separate rows. You can see one's got the iPhone, and then we create a separate one for the AirPods. The second part of 1NF says that all the data in a column has to be of the same data type. If we take a look at this example for the price, you can see that we have an integer with the 1097, and then you've got a text string with the free. That doesn't quite work, and instead you will need to change it into something like this, with a zero instead of free. And the final part of 1NF is that each row must be uniquely identifiable. For example, in this table, there is no difference between these two rows, so instead what you do is create a primary key like this. It's basically a special type of column, or a combination of columns in a table, that uniquely identifies each row. In this case, it's the order ID, but other examples include a student ID or a passport number where it uniquely identifies you and no two people can have the same one. Once our data fulfills all of this criteria, we progress onto second normal form. And the first most obvious requirement is that it must already be in 1NF. Continuing with the analogy, you can't skip to a blue belt without having a yellow belt first in martial arts. The second requirement is that every non-key column must depend on the whole primary key. That might sound a bit confusing, so let me explain further. 
The primary key here is the order ID, so all the other columns must depend on that. Right now though, the price and the category don't actually depend on the order ID. Instead, they depend on the product. The product dictates the price here and not the order ID. So to fix this, we need to split the table into two smaller ones like this. One tells us what we bought and the other tells us the details of each product. Thanks to the structure, we only write the price in the category once per product instead of repeating it every time there is an order. If you remember the anomaly problems we saw earlier, like the update anomaly, the insertion anomaly, and the deletion anomaly, as well as wasting excess space in the disk storage, this basically addresses that problem. So in simple terms, each piece of information should live in only one place. Awesome, now before moving on to the third normal form, with data visualization, we can organize the data. That said, we're not able to ask it questions and get answers. For that, we need SQL or SQL. And you can learn how to use that with our SQL for Business Analytics course. With our hands-on, case study-based approach to learning SQL, you'll go from complete beginner to confidently adding this skill on your resume and using it on the job. Our curriculum starts with the basics of databases and how to get started with SQL. From here, you learn to create your own databases and add tables and values inside of it. Then you learn to interact with databases by writing queries from very simple select statements to more complex window functions, joins, and even subqueries. Finally, once you're comfortable with SQL, we'll work on two extensive case studies designed to simulate a real-world scenario where you'll be working as an analyst both cleaning up data and extracting valuable insights based on your team's requests. So if you're interested in learning SQL, head over to the link in the description below. That brings us to our third normal form, and here the first and second must be satisfied. Just like in martial arts, you need to have received a yellow belt and then a blue belt to be eligible for the black one. In third normal form, there should be no transitive dependencies. That's basically when one piece of data depends on another piece of data, which itself depends on the main thing in the table. I know that sounds very confusing, but in fact, as you can see here, category depends on the price and the price depends on the product. That's a transitive dependency because the category isn't directly derived from the product. Because of that, we end up having repetition and updating issues. To fix this, we put each layer in its own table like this, where we've got the order table, the pricing categories table, and then the product table. Although there are other levels of normalization like 4NF, 5NF, etc., third normal form is considered the highest level required for most applications. And you might think the higher the normal form, the better, but that's not necessarily the case as there is a trade-off. Even though you might have better data integrity and less redundancy, the more tables you have, the more difficult it is to understand and the more complex your queries will be. Overall, I realized that was a lot of theory, so let's go over a practical example where we follow all of these steps and you can test yourself by downloading the file in the video description to follow along. First up, you can see we have this data set and we need to convert it into first normal form. You'll notice under the groups here, as well as under the quantities and the prices, we have more than one value. Because of that comma here, we probably won't have the right data types either, as there's integers here, but because of the comma, that's probably gonna be a string. Same thing with the price. That said, we do have unique order IDs, so the primary key seems to be okay. Let's now take a look at how we would solve this. As you can see, we've just split each of the orders into separate rows, and we now have the order ID repeated here for 01, which is problematic in terms of the primary key. Therefore, we'll have to use a composite key, which is a primary key that consists of two or more columns. In this scenario, the composite key is going to be the combination of the order ID and the product. That's gonna make each row unique. Awesome, now we're ready to move on to 2NF. Here, we need to remove the partial dependencies, so things such as the phone or the address here don't really depend on the combination of order ID and the product which are our composite keys. Instead, they depend just on the customer. So we can separate them like this, where we've got the customer table right here in the middle, we've got just the order table, and then on the right hand side we have the order details table. Here, the quantity, the price, and the group all depend on the combination of the order ID and the product. Finally, in 3NF, we need to get rid of the transitive dependencies. If we take a look at the order details table here, we've got this whole group area, 
which doesn't really depend on the combination of order ID and the product. Instead, it just depends on the product. To fix that, we just need to create a separate table like this one over here, where we've got one column with the products and then the groups on the other. And the order details table is simplified because we no longer have those groups. Awesome, so we've structured the data and the next step is to analyze it, which you need a SQL for. So you can learn how to do SQL with this video over here or by taking our SQL course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.